What is good? We got a tripod. We got Austin. How you doing, bud? Good, man. What's up, fellas? Any day I get to talk football, any day I get to talk dynasty, it's a good day, man. We got some potential superstars. We have some really good second round picks today. So I'm happy to be here and pay attention, fellas. Pay attention. Matt, good to see you. How you doing, man? Doing well. Usually I can just massage your shoulder from, from right yeah. over here. but Yeah, for sure. Uh, doing it from the... Uh, from the, the, uh, the temporary office. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. We're back in. We did a first round of a, of a rookie mock, uh, super flex tight end premium. And now we're going to hit you with the second part of that mock. Uh, but before we get rolling on that, I just wanted to read off the first round real quick in case you didn't uh, watch that one. So you'll be kind of caught up with where we were. You can always go back and watch it. But um, first we had Marvin Harrison Jr. Then we had Casey, Caleb what Williams. Were the, what were the scoring settings? Uh, super flex tight end premium. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. went first in this one by Austin. Then Matt took Caleb Williams. And then I took uh, Drake May. Then Malik Neighbors. Then Roma Dunze. Then Brock Bowers at six. Penix at seven. Igbuka at eight. Jaden Daniels at nine. Keon Coleman at 10. Travion Henderson at 11 from Matt. We know now that there seems likely that maybe Henderson may be going back to school. We um, haven't heard anything officially, but the third string and fourth string running backs are now in the portal. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, who knows? But that's what it's early. It's way too early. Um, but, you know, we're having some fun here. We got Troy Franklin at 12. So we are at the top of 2 1 here. And Austin, you are on deck. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz before we get going. You can follow Austin at Austin Abbott FF on all your social medias of Twitters. That's two B's and two T's and at fat Mormon on the Twitter machine uh, for Mr. Matthew up there. So at two, one to lead us off Austin, what is the play? Yeah, Casey, appreciate the shout out, man. At the 201, the 13th pick overall, don't be surprised if Xavier Worthy is being drafted as a late first round pick when the dynasty rookie drafts roll around. Xavier Worthy is six foot one, 172 pounds, he allegedly ran a 429. To tell you the truth, I know X can turn on the Jets at any given moment. I don't necessarily know if I truly believe he's quite that fast, but uh, you know, the NFL Combine is going to be some good content. It's my favorite time of the year. Love the NFL draft. It is truly the most magical day of the year. That Thursday, that first round is just as good as it gets, man. Uh, X Xavier Worthy, he did hit 22.7 miles an hour, which is Hard to fathom, hard to comprehend just how fast that is. Um, you know, he he was clocked in as the fastest college football player this year on the field. So for what that's worth, uh, I'm excited to draft Xavier Worthy here at 201. I believe the biggest question you have to ask yourself is if he beefs up his frame in the NFL, which kind of feels inevitable if he does, will he be able to keep 90% of his speed? Uh, if so, he'll be problematic at the next level. He's absolutely going to be problematic He's just 20 years old. He had nearly 1,000 yards as a true 18-year-old freshman and a target share of over 30%, 12 touchdowns. I mean, dude, come on. Like, there, there's so much to like about this kid. And, you know, that got my attention right away. That was back in 2021 when he established himself on the map and he started turning heads right away. If you give him a little bit of space, he's going to beat you vertically. Dominant slant runner, no question about that. Goes from zero to sixty faster than most cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he versatile, thrived as a punt returner. Not a lot of people talk about that, and that's when he actually hit twenty two point seven miles an hour. And he he just put up some big numbers when it mattered most against ranked teams. Five for seventy five against number three ranked Alabama, eight for one hundred and eight against twelfth ranked Sooners, and six for eighty six again against the twentieth ranked Oklahoma State. Uh, this dude's got the upside that you wish all your dynasty all your dynasty assets would have and and that's why I feel comfortable leaving the draft with Xavier Worthy at the 201. Yeah, I mean a lot of these guys that we're going to talk about today could be making their way up into the first round depending on a lot of factors as we move forward here and Xavier Worthy is certainly one of those draft capital seems like it's been floating around, you know, in in the first round uh, and a lot of mocks that you look at. So uh, and I think that's going to be the case for a decent amount of the guys that we go through here, at least, you know, a handful of them. So Matt, lead us off with the two, two here. Who you got? So I'm taking the quarter quarterback. We've talked about 
uh, exhaustively over the in, during these mocks, and that is Oregon's Bo Nix. Uh, slid a little, slid a little bit in this draft. I think I know Casey and I watched the uh, Washington game together, the Pac-12 championship, and came away unimpressed with Bo. Um, mm-hmm. Just seemed like he did have some poor decision making. Uh, his footwork an issue. Uh, also playing through adversity. I mean, he was garbage at Auburn in a bad situation. And then all of a sudden went to Auburn under Dan Lanning and Oregon decided that he was, yeah, no, yeah, he was bad at Auburn and then went to Dan Lanning at Oregon and just seemed to be a completely different player. So, um, how does, how is this going to work out? Whether when he is in a not perfect situation for him. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a lot of great things like about Bo Nix. Uh, he was the number two rated quarterback this year, only behind Jaden Daniels. He was the number one rated passer per PFF, number two in passing yards, number two in yards per attempt. He was tied with Daniels for touchdowns, and he was number he was second in passing rating and number one in both completion and adjusted completion percentage. Um, he did also have the seventh lowest turnover worthy plays according to the PFF. However, something that could help that could hinder him. He was the fourth lowest. In uh, in Jason's favorite word, average depth of target. <laughs> we'll see how we'll see how Nix does. I think he could. I think there's a good chance that he's going to get drafted in the first round, and then this changes the whole calculus for him because I think if he goes in the first round, you kind of have to take him. I think in the first round of your rookie draft as well too. Now, if he slides to the second, who knows how far he could slide then? So, um, Levis didn't seem to slide that far. And there's similar, I would say there's similar rushing upside there. We haven't seen that with Levis thus far, uh, but Nick's obviously has that rushing upside uh, with 5.2 yards per attempt and 38 career rushing touchdowns. Obviously, that was over five seasons. So, <laughs> I mean, the man played more college, started more college football games than any other quarterback. So, yeah, um, Van Wilder of uh... yeah. Now, 25% of his runs did go for over 25% of his runs did go for more than 10 yards. So, obviously, some things to like there. So, yeah. Um, I think Bo is interesting. I'm just not sure that he's a finished product. And at he's probably going on 23, if not 24 at this point. Uh, how much more maturation does he have? Yeah. Um, we have seen his, his PFF uh, grade did improve year over year. So obviously he was able to improve as a situation improved and has improved as a passer. So I, I think there are some things to like about Knicks, but I still have question marks that lead him right now with him outside the top 12. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree with that. It seems like he's he's fluctuated a little bit and then ended on ended on a down trend with a lot of people watching. Um, and there's a guy that's coming up here that you know may be able to even get up a little higher because people are going to be watching. Xavier Worthy is going to be on a stage where people everybody's going to be watching. So that that could be a huge boost. You know, if you play well in that stage. Um, yeah, Oregon kind of got shafted in the bowl game when they're playing against Tulane. So yeah, or Lib- is it Liberty? Liberty. They're playing Liberty, against Liberty. I think. Yeah, playing against Liberty. I mean, does anyone really watch Oregon kick shit out of Liberty? <laughs> no. Um, no. But yeah, Bo Nix, interesting uh, for sure. So we'll keep it moving here. Um, I'm up next. I went with the second running back here. I think that this is where we're going to be getting running backs in our in our rookie drafts here for the most part. I think. Um, I don't know that they're, they're certainly not a high level like the Bijan Gibbs type level guys, but I think there's a decent amount of pretty good players and some some depth at the running back position. Um, we've lost a little bit of it. We could lose some more, so we shall see. But I'm going Trey Benson here. Um, seems to be coming out for sure. Um, 6'1", 223 per PFF. So good size and, and stature for for a workhorse style running back that, that I believe he is. Um, and he doesn't have, you know, a, a great, there's not a career breakout age that you love or anything along those lines. Went to Oregon, had a bad knee injury there where he ripped up uh, the ACL, the MCL and some meniscus um, and then transferred out of Oregon um, in 2020. And then 2021 or 2022 started the campaign at Florida state um, where, you know, he does, he didn't put up gaudy numbers by any means in 22 or 23 here. Um, but you know, both years he was hovering right around a thousand yards rushing, um, 6.5 yards per attempt in 2022, 5.8 in 2023 here, then 14 touchdowns this season, nine touchdowns the season before, and then 20 receptions on the season. So that's, you know, typically a marker that people like to see. Uh, that, that he did cross that threshold and he looks natural in the passing game. doesn't look like a struggle. Um, so I don't think that that's something that people are going to be able to hold against him. To me, you're getting a running back. Who's kind of the whole package here. Um, 
really, really good footwork. I think he can grind you out a game, and he's he's got some some pretty good speed to boot. It's not crazy breakaway Jamar Gibbs speed, but it's I think it's pretty solid, and he's he's obviously you know built very sturdily. Um, so kind of gives you uh, a prototypical what you would want to see from your workhorse. And I think the draft capital is going to be there as far as these running backs are going to go. Probably going to be one of the first running backs off the board uh, and be in this, you know, probably in the second round somewhere, uh, you know, like you see the Dallas Cowboys or somebody taking somebody like Trey Benson. Um, that, you know, I think they're probably going to let Tony Pollard walk. They got Rico Dattle who's walking. They need to come back in. I don't think the Cowboys want to pay a running back. So I think they're going to be looking for, you know, they, they, they got Zeke off the books. They're, they're scarred and they're, they're going to probably be looking to draft an RB here. Um, and I think a guy like Trey Benson could be somebody like for the Cowboys here early or, uh, you know, probably later in the second round. So um, guys have any thoughts on, on Trey Benson? Like this? He has declared Casey. Yeah. I believe he did that a couple days ago. Nice. So uh, Casey, I love that man. 28 games in his collegiate career, zero fumbles. You love it. Good stat. All right. Uh, who's next? Austin. Uh, what do you got here? 204. Okay. In my opinion, this is where the draft starts to get a lot of fun. Uh, we have a real debate on our hands. Who's the better Texas wide receiver? Mm-hmm. Is it Xavier worthy or is it AD Mitchell? Right. I think it's a very valid question. And at the 204, I'm Connor McGregor walking over to the podium to announce my pick. I'm swinging my arms. I'm feeling good, man. Uh, now, everybody that's listening to the pod, I'm going to do my best to sell you on AD Mitchell really quick. The, the college production doesn't necessarily blow you away, right? But the film, I would argue, is significantly more telling. 50-plus receptions, 800-plus yards, 10 touchdowns. Those are some numbers. Those, those are some fair numbers. It's just a some nice thresholds, right? Uh, A.D. Mitchell spent his first two seasons at Georgia, then transferred over to Texas, six foot four, which is 89th percentile. You love to see it, 196 pounds. He could drink a milkshake or two, wouldn't be mad about it. <laughs> Uh, but but there's a real chance that Mitchell gets drafted as a late first round pick or a relatively early second round pick. And sure, Xavier Worthy is faster, but A.D. Mitchell's got stronger hands than him. Uh, very similar long strides. A.D.'s about three inches taller. I personally think A.D.'s the better route runner, I would argue. There are some people that tell you otherwise. He just has awesome awareness. A.D. Mitchell, that is. His physicality is awesome. His hands were, were probably the number one thing that that stuck out to me when I, when I put on the tape and he's capable of running a full route tree. That's something that not only caught my attention, but you know, that matters in the NFL. It really does. And I can't stress how vital it is to properly separate. And that was never an issue for AD Mitchell, right? I know on previous episodes on the FF dynasty, we've talked about uh, Keon Coleman struggling to separate. I don't see that as an issue for AD Mitchell. Uh, let's have some fun with it, fellas. Let's manifest the Kansas City Chiefs taking A.D. Mitchell at the end of round one. Why not? With Kelsey declining, uh, hinting at retirement, Sky Moore and Kadarius Toney, uh, you know, just flopping. Mahomes could absolutely use another valuable weapon. Let's plug in six foot four A.D. Mitchell right here to the Kansas City Chiefs at the end of the first round. How, what do you guys say? Yeah, I mean, Kelsey's in love. You know, we love love on this show. And, you know, if that's what he needs to do to ride off into the sunset with with T Swift, then, you know, he'll do funny things to you. So, you know, doesn't hurt when your girlfriend's a literal billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, I, I think the the, the char- there are the Chargers. The, the Chiefs have to address a wide receiver issue. Uh, now you are going to get some free agents uh, coming up here, I believe. I don't have the list in front of me, but we, I just started digging into those. So you may get a couple of uh, free veteran free agents available, but. I think they need to address this uh, in the draft, you know, come come at the first or the second round and and take, you know, Rice is great. I think they hit on that one. He's he's coming on as being a good receiver, but uh, I think they could uh, grab another different stylistic receiver. Um, and, and if I don't know if that's A.D. Mitchell or not, uh, but it'll be um, I think it's definitely something the Chiefs should address. Can I take uh, Brett Veach's? job really quickly the kansas city chiefs general manager i would love to plug in not only rashid rice and ad mitchell together but let's go out let's make a splash let's go get t higgins man what an awesome trio that would be for patrick mahomes yeah yeah definitely i know i know it's not gonna happen but like (laughs) come on man let's have fun yeah like why not man go out go pay him man patrick mahomes would be happy just the saints know that the salary cap is not real right like it just doesn't exist so uh Let's go talk to some people in the New Orleans organization and <laughs> yeah. uh, figure out how to get T. Higgins there. All right. So, yeah. that's how I feel. 
All I don't right. know that Mahomes would know what to do with all that size. He's used to throwing the guys under six feet tall. <laughs> yeah. 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 Matt, you're up. What do you, who, who you got at, uh, what are we at? Two, two, five. Yep. Who you got? So I also dug back into the same school well as Austin did as well, too, when I went with uh, Bucky Irving from uh, Oregon, the running back at 5'10", 195. We are seeing with Jameer Gibbs that you don't have to be 200 pounds to succeed in the NFL. So I'm not saying Irving is Jameer Gibbs, but I'm also saying that the 200-pound threshold is probably something that we don't need to worry about or is Gibbs an exception. But – with Irving, uh, he was 16th best uh, running grade in 23. He was number six in 2022. Uh, he's 10th best missed tackles forced in 2023. He's 15th in 2022. And he was elusive rating. He was 14th in 2023 and sixth in 2022. Uh, this year he had 52 catches and 30 last year. So certainly meeting thresholds and is definitely going to be a threat on third down. Uh, I did get to watch a little bit of Irving tape. Uh, he's definitely going to function best in space. Uh, he uses quickness and agility to defeat defenders. He's not going to run over defenders, and I think he could struggle potentially at the next level between the tackles. He's got a bunch of concentration drops that I saw uh, pretty consistently, too, were in the Georgia game last year. Had two pretty bad ones. Um, when he does catch the ball, he quickly becomes a runner and uh, uses that ability to be able to make, to make his own space. So I think Irving's going to be an interesting back. Um, I think I'm not sure where he's going to be at. I think he could be the the number one in a committee. Obviously, I think the workhorse running back is kind of a thing of the past um, in most cases. So, but I think Irving has a lot of things that you like. Obviously, he likes to he can catch passes. Uh, I'll be interested when I dig more into his tape to see what his uh, pass blocking looks like. So to see if he can really hang on there on third down because that's what tends to hold up a lot of rookies that aren't named Roshan Johnson is their ability to pass protect. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bucky, Bucky over Braylon Allen. Yeah. I don't know. It's we're not deep in the I, tape. So, I mean, we're, we're not we're, deep we're, now. We're not, we're, we're just going it, through the exercises right I, now. I, I like the explosiveness a bit more of Irving than of Allen. Um, Allen didn't have a great year this year. Obviously that not, not saying that just because he's a bad year, doesn't mean he's going to do anything. Um, I just have been a little bit happier with Irving and that could change once you dig into the tape a little bit more. Yeah. Um, there's another guy that I really like as well too, who didn't get picked here, who I would probably switch with my other picks, but, uh, I'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think Irving has some, some definite upside here in, in terms of a, a second round running back, which, which is, I think the second round could have anywhere from, it's anywhere from three to six running backs taken here yeah. in the second round of your rookie draft. So yeah. this can be a pretty, pretty good spot for running backs to go. Especially if Henderson doesn't doesn't declare, which seems likely he doesn't. I think the second round is where you're going to find running backs. Yeah, which has been a, which has been a weird spot. It's been a a kind of a a, a feast or famine for these second round rookie running backs. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. Matt, do you think Trevion Henderson's going to declare? No, you yeah. don't think so. No, not the writing's on the wall there. Mayan Williams declared, and then you got Chip Trainum and. Uh, the other cat who are in the portal. And if they're both in the portal, it doesn't seem likely. It seems likely that the, that Henderson has told people internally that he's planning on coming back. So you've got these stories that about Marvin Harrison jr. They're trying to offer him $20 million That's in NIL right. money. He's not going no. He's not pay. He's not giving up $20 million to, to go play in college, to, to, to push off his second contract for another year. That's that. That's all this is about. It's not about the money, the year one, year two, year three, year four money. This is about getting closer to that second contract because that's where you're really going to make your hay is in that second contract. So, yeah. Um, so definitely interesting, though, with Ohio State's offense. I think Henderson was going to be the only – could be the only skill position starter back. I think they're going to lose, like, their top, like, six receivers. So, would be crazy. Yeah. Between the draft and – uh transfers so but unfortunately for them they've got like 17 five stars wide receivers yeah. waiting to catch the ball so yeah. fuck them <laughs> all right uh so bucky Irvin there he's he's a real fun player a lot of fun to watch so i'll be interested to see how the, the process goes on him as we go forward i'm up next i'm gonna go it is tight end premium here so i'm gonna take basically the second tight end off the board i think and and every everybody's rankings everybody's drafts every everywhere you go basically the draft capital is jt sanders uh jatavion sanders here I, i've been a big fan of him he, he is a bit more like 
a wide receiver than a tight end, uh, 6'4", 243. Um, not really going to give you too much of that inline uh, work. I think he may be a little more scheme dependent. He needs to go to the right place to really explode, but, you know, kind of a bit more in that, you know, Evan Ingram kind of mold of, of a player. I, I see like a little bit more wide receiver first than tight end first, but can do some other things for you. So he needs to get into an offense that, you know, isn't expecting him to do certain things. Um, but I think the sky's the limit for him. He's been awesome in certain spots this year. Again, like we talked about Mitchell and, um, worthy he's going to get a chance in the um championship games here to to really explode and and he crushed it um in the last championship game in the in the conference championship against oklahoma state um eight receptions for 105 yards and a touchdown there's been times uh, throughout the season where he's looks like their best receiver on the field and he's a tight end uh he did get his ankle rolled up in the kansas game and then it was a little slim pickings there for a little while but had a couple of bounce back games in there. I like the way he moves around. Not a terrible blocker, but not like again, not somebody you want to line up in line and you know six four two forty three um, needs to be used properly. But I think in all all facets, he's going to be your number two wide receiver. And for tight end premium, I want a guy who has a chance to to kind of be a volume hog, be be a Dalton Kincaid type of player. I'm not saying he's as good as Dalton Kincaid, um, but I don't think he's terribly far behind. Um, just very fluid, natural, pretty fast, um, big fella there. So I'm, I'm taking the tight end here, the second tight end off the board, and the second rated tight end here uh, midway through the the second round. Uh, and this is tight end premium. So if it wasn't premium, maybe you back him down a little bit. I could see Sanders getting, you know, probably second round-ish draft capital in real life. Um, you know, maybe somebody like uh, your Colts picking up a tight end who don't have one or you know if, if the enemy wherever he goes ends up gets a guy like sanders um you know you see right now lo- the, the the ghost of logan thomas crushing with the enemy if, if he had somebody like sanders out there doing uh those type of things i think you could get some big production from him so be interesting to see where sanders lands i think the capital is going to be good i think he's a very good player um but needs to be matched up uh with the right system i think just just really like anybody else but i think it's, he's not going to be your traditional tight end. You need to get him kind of moving around and, and get him in the slot. So uh, Sanders has been a favorite of mine to, to watch throughout this season. So going Sanders here. Austin, who you got at 2-7 here? All right. I'm on the clock here at the 207. Let me get the discount Jonathan Taylor. Of course, I don't think he's nearly quite as good as Jonathan Taylor. I just wanted to shout out Wisconsin. Uh, we're talking about another big dog, another solid running back that I really like as a prospect in Braylon Allen. You, so, Casey, you touched on him a little bit earlier, and you're 100% right. He did have uh, – I would say he hurt his stock a little bit, stock down this past season, right? Six foot two, 96 percentile. Again, a big dog. He is 245 pounds, an absolute unit of a running back, 99th percentile. All right, so we're talking like maybe even bigger than, you know, Jerome Bettis, Najee Harris, like fat eddie lacy like he he's up there man he's big yeah and the crazy craziest part is this kid's 19 years old still like he's not even 20 years old dude he was born in 2004 like what are, <laughs> dude, <laughs> just I, I just saw that i was like 2004 dude like i'm 1996 like how, how am i that much older than somebody in the nfl but yeah <laughs> he, he allegedly dude he allegedly ran a 4 4 92nd percentile i don't know if i believe it we'll see man if he's running that fast at that size he's going to be a problem in the NFL. He is a potentially an early declare, which is, you know, a lot of you analytical nut jobs, analytic nut jobs love to see that man. Braylon Allen, Braylon Allen is currently a junior and he bulked up 10 pounds. He got up to 245. He benched 365 pounds for what it's worth. I just saw that man. I was just like, all right, that's some, you know, that's a pretty good weight. That's a pretty good weight right there. And he, he claimed that he got a lot faster this season. Um, I don't I don't necessarily know if I agree with that, but he runs aggressive. He runs with power, just pure violence. Right. He, he's always fighting for that extra yard. He's not going out of bounds. It's, it kind of reminded me of Marshawn Lynch in the sense that he's just he's he's going to see how many yards he can steal from you. He's, he's going to make you pay for each and every single run, each and every play. Uh, I hope he gets mid second round draft cap in the NFL. Uh, maybe late second round if not i'm hoping it's very early uh third i don't necessarily know like we're still far out man and i think one of the more difficult parts about the nfl draft is 
getting inside of the minds of GMs and figuring out how they evaluate and value running backs, especially mm-hmm. what we've seen with running backs, the landscape of the position in the recent years. Um, if I had to point out a flaw, I don't think he's particularly a good route runner or going to be a massive factor in the passing game, in my opinion. And I, I just think that he's – I thought he was an above average pass blocker. So we do love to see that, right? That, that generally sure. leads to being on the field more, never a bad thing. Volume is always key. And I'll end it with this, 1,268 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns. That's a true 17-year-old freshman, right? That will absolutely get your attention. 1,237 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns the next year. And then this season, a little bit of a down year, but 12 touchdowns. He had uh, more than double his reception total from the previous season with 28 catches. So, like, yeah, that's the type of progress that we want to see. 36 touchdowns in 35 collegiate games. He also had a passing touchdown for what it's worth. And uh, he's just a massive back. He's just a massive back. Of of course, he's going to find the end zone and tire out defenses. To walk away with Braylon Allen here at the 207 feels fantastic. I'm ecstatic to leave the draft with him. Yeah. I, I, to me, that's Tennessee Titans written all over him. You get a, you get a big bruising. Uh, that would be fun. That would be fun. <laughs> I like uh, that King Henry replacement there. So we got Braylon Allen off the board. Matt, you're up next. Got a got a got the big fella here, huh? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't look like you like it. No, I, I, I. This was kind of a this is kind of a projection pick for me. What do you do with a guy who's six foot seven, weighs two hundred thirty seven pounds, and runs a four four forty? So this is Johnny Wilson from Florida State, and. To me, the analytical, the analytical guys, he's gonna be a, he's gonna be nothing. He doesn't have a breakout age, thirty third percentile dominator rating, sixty first percentile target share. Um, he was ninth in yards per route run last year, but this is just a pure. Give me this guy walking off the bus. That as I mentioned again, six foot seven, almost two hundred forty pounds, and the guy can fly. So. Yeah. This is this is a projection pick for me here in the 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 latter part of the second round here where I'm okay taking a flyer on this taking a flyer on someone and if it doesn't pay off then I have then I've wasted a second round pick if it pays off then I then I got him for a late second round pick but if I'm on the clock here be, due to recent news I might be leaning Audric Estime over Johnny mm. Wilson but that's even hot and heavy on the Estime I love me some estimate. Mm, I like it. I like it. But I, th- I think Johnny Wilson. I mean, I've seen places where he's like, gone, man. where he's gone in the first round. I mean, yeah. no, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I think he's worth mentioning here because yeah. he's going to get the draft capital. He's yeah. probably going to go in the first or second round because people are going to be enamored by his by his um, adjusted speed score, which is going to be off the charts. So Tampa Bay getting a Mike Evans replacement, potentially. <laughs> so. A bit droppy though. So again, I think there's a lot of to- there's a lot of physical tools here. I just don't know where the where the actual production is because he was the te- team's leading receiver last year, but Coleman came in and seems to have stolen the show from Wilson this past year. So a uh, guy who transferred from Arizona said that Arizona State team like three years ago was a wild. How <laughs> yeah. they want better was crazy. Dave Daniels. Dave Daniels, Rashad White, Johnny Wilson. Yeah. Um, they had somebody else there too. Iok like, was there probably a little bit before them. But I think Jaden Daniels yeah. and Iok were probably there at the same time at, at some point. I don't think they would have crossed paths. Maybe not. But yeah, crazy. Jaden Daniels, Rashad White, Johnny Wilson. Yeah. Um, there was somebody else that was there too. The team was crazy, and I think they probably didn't even make it to a bowl game. Yeah. Nope. Happens like that sometimes. Yeah. All right. So Johnny Wilson, uh, next pick. And I know people are probably like, where's JJ McCarthy? Where's JJ McCarthy? Well, you're gonna have to wait one more because JJ McCarthy stinks and I hate him. Um, I'm going, I'm going Brian Thomas Jr. Here. I'm taking the other LSU wide receiver. You know, I, there's a lot to like here. Six four two oh five. He's going to give you kind of that that outside vertical threat here. Eighty five percent of his snaps were out wide. Seems to have very good speed for the size there. Uh, he just looks incredibly long out there. Bunch of over the shoulder passes where he's extending those arms and just it's ridiculous. Led the nation in, in touchdown receptions, over a thousand yards on sixty receptions. 18 yards per reception and a 2.65 yards per route run. I think him and Jaden Daniels both really boosted their stock up from this, this great season that they put together. Um, He's been, he's been mocked with some really good draft capital end of the first, second round. 
uh, for Brian Thomas Jr. here. Uh, and he kind of gives you, uh, like I said, that that kind of more outside prototypical, get you down the field, can, can strike from anywhere, but also, you know, a pretty good mover for that size. He's not a, some big stiff uh, guy. So I think there's a lot to like with Brian Thomas Jr. here. I think he's been climbing up the boards. Uh, and I think he may end up being somebody who's closer to the top of the second round when we start rookie drafts, because I think people are going to really fall in love with him. And I think there's going to be a lot of positives coming out. Just going and I watched I watched two games so far of him, and it was like, man, that's that's a whole lot of fun to have on your team. And, and what an opposition for, you know, Malik neighbors to have uh, to have Brian Thomas and Brian Thomas Jr. there. So that's that's my pick. What do we got next? Anybody anybody dislike Brian Thomas Jr.? No, I, I don't think he's going to last to the 209, man. I think he's going to go way earlier come, uh, you know, come the Rook Dynasty rookie drafts. Yeah, so that was 2-9. Austin, you're up here, and I, I I love this pick. This 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 has been one of my favorite guys here. So who do you got at 2-9? Thank you, Casey. Appreciate it. And, you know, not a lot of people are talking about this running back. I landed on Devin Neal at the 210. Now, here's what I love about Devin Neal, the Kansas running back that that he just had instant production as a freshman he had over 700 rushing yards his yards per carry has increased every single season all three years back to back a thousand plus rushing yard seasons over 1200 last year over 3,000 rushing yards 35 touchdowns in 36 collegiate games uh, five foot 11 210 pounds Electric. college production yep college production check early production check size check a true collegiate workhorse running back check i mean dude there is a lot to like and this is the very end of the second round this is like almost uh yeah what, i misspoke it's 210 overall. it's 210 it's not 29 uh, uh, sorry yeah. well this is what 22nd overall pick in right. dynasty rookie drafts you know to land somebody with this type of resume like dude of, of course these are the type of dart throws you want to take this like uh, passing game skills are strong. His receptions went up annually every single season. His rushing attempts went up every single season. His volume went up every single season, man. I watched his film. The first thing I thought of, man, the first thing that caught my eyes, he just has devastating cuts. Like once he puts his once he plants mm-hmm. his foot in the ground, dude, he is he's he's tough, man. He is elusive, he is decisive, and he wants the ball in his hands. And and I absolutely you know, that's who I want with the 210. So I'm going to pull trigger here and hoping that he gets, I'm really hoping that he gets a reasonable day two or early day three draft cap in the NFL. Again, like that's something that I probably value more than most GMs. I probably value, I probably overvalue and I recognize that, but um, I'm just hoping he can, he can land on a relatively decent, decent team where he can be the guy pretty quickly. Right. Because I, I again, I, I love his size. I love his resume. I love his production. There's a lot to like about Devin Neal. Yeah. No, I like I like Devin Neal a lot, and, and I'm sure we're going to wrap up here in a minute, and there's going to be a couple other running backs we didn't even get to that, that mm-hmm. could easily be all throughout the second round. Like Matt mentioned, there could be six, seven, eight running backs even going in the second round uh, by the time we get there, especially in you know non-super flex versions of this uh, world. So, yeah, I, I, like, uh, I love Devin Neal. Uh, and Matt, who who you got? Do you have anything on Devin Neal before we move to the next pick? I'm excited for all his, his offensive coordinator. Oh yeah, look at you! Always got to, always goes back to the mothership. Always. <laughs> uh, all right, who you got at two eleven? JJ McCarthy. Mm. Un- unenthusiastic. I'm JJ walking McCarthy. up to the podium, the exact opposite of Connor McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> Just sl- shoulders slumped over. I Mo- guess because well, he, because you're a Penn McCarthy. State guy or just because he's it's just, just I just don't know what he is as a quarterback. Yeah. He was 13th and he's a 13th rated passer, 10th rated offensive play or 10th rated for offense for quarterbacks. He's second in completion percentage, third in adjusted completion percentage, and 12th in yards per attempt. But again, what is his arm strength? That's I think the biggest concern with JJ McCarthy is the arm strength is can he push the ball down the field or is he simply just a game manager who yeah. is going to be able to dink and dunk your way down the field? And I guess if you want a Chad Pennington type, that's fine, but whoa, I just whoa, don't whoa. know that. Don't slander Chad's name. If he didn't have a shoulder uh, injury, he'd be all yeah. pro. Yeah. And McCarthy does give some rushing upside as well too. So 
There's a couple, and, and and again, this is another guy. If he goes in the top fifteen picks, there's no way he's going to eleven no, in no, any no. in any. I mean, how it's probably I mean, not going to be me though. No, it's probably no, definitely not, definitely not. And I mean, how late did Jan- Daniel Jones go in drafts when he went sixth overall? Yeah, not m- mid mid to end two or mid to end one rather. Yeah, even in superflex, you know right. what I mean. This is like Marquise Brown all over again. I mean, he was a first overall. He was a first round draft pick and he slid to the second round a lot of drafts you know what i mean Kadarius right. tony right obviously for reasons that we're seeing now mm-hmm. um so mccarthy's gonna have the capital here i just don't know what his nfl ceiling is which i think is low i think yeah. he's got a pretty decent floor but i think that his ceiling is also pretty pretty low though as well too so uh, I'll be very interested to see him go against the Bama. alabama defense yeah. so which isn't the alabama defense of late but um, been improving. Yeah, for better. sure. I mean, <clears throat> McCarthy did nothing against my Nittany Lions because they didn't have to. Mm-hmm. I think he complete. I think he attempted like seven up passes too. for the entire game. So, and against Ohio State, I think he did just enough to to beat them. I think that was more a couple mistakes that their former that their now former quarterback made mm-hmm. that helped them win that game more than anything else. And obviously, that two headed running backs they have here. I mean, and McCarthy's been playing behind an elite offensive line for the last two years as well, too. They won the the award for the best offensive line in the country the last two years, and I think they're a finalist again this year as well, too. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I think I think you kind of hit it there with I I, don't, I just don't know with him and Bo Nix. I'm just not sure what exactly is like the, the the special thing that gets me excited. I think they can both manage a game. I think they can make the throws at certain parts of the game. I think they both can do that. Um, and you know, you mentioned Nick's kind of cleaning up some turnovers and being a lot smarter with the pl- with the ball. McCarthy, I think, is is, is kind of similar there. Um, you know, if Jim Harbaugh goes somewhere in the NFL and takes McCarthy with him, it'll probably, you know, it'll probably be just an, another really solid marriage. But, you know, I'm just I'm just not that excited to draft either one of those. But sometimes, you know, that's all right at the end of the first to get a non-exciting quarterback and just be able to get a third and or, a you know, a second that that just gets you, you know, 18 points a week or whatever. I mean, you know, it's, it's all right. But just yeah. I'm, I'm just probably probably not going to be me. The rushing up, the, the 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 rushing ability for both Nix and McCarthy is definitely something that helps bring up their ceiling just a little bit. But I think it's still capped overall. I think I feel a little bit better about Nix's arm talent than I, than I do about McCarthy's. Yeah, people are gonna so, be mad about this one, but what's that? Get at me, dog. I said people are gonna be mad about this one, but get at me, dog. You know. Yeah, I mean, again, we'll see what NFL evaluate, evaluators think, but they've been wrong a hundred times. And yep. we've been wrong a thousand times. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, let me uh, let me wrap this thing up. I'm gonna take Tez Walker here with the last pick. Um, obviously, there was a million choices I could have made here. I could have taken Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards. I don't know if either one of those guys are coming out, um, but they're both solid running backs. I know uh, Brooks from Texas. He got hurt. He's probably not coming out. You mentioned Estime. Um, Shipley didn't get taken here. A lot of people like Marshawn Lloyd from USC. Um, so that's a couple more running backs that were there. Xavier Leggett, um, who's big bodied, a little bit late break out there. But I read something today that he was like coming in at like six foot, like 190. So obviously hit a growth spurt. He looks like a monster out there or just got some good HGH. He's very large and runs very fast. So could have been in here. I mean, he's probably going to get the capital. But I took Tez Walker. I'm not 100 percent sure he's declared yet or if he's coming out, but he's a transfer. Um, and then kind of got the shafts at the beginning of the season. And then finally, enough outrage happened that they let him in. Played at UNC with Drake May, 6'2", 200. He led UNC in targets, yards, yards per reception, dot, and yards per route run. And was two receptions off the lead for most on the team in only eight games. So when he came in, he was just a force to be reckoned with. He's a whole lot of fun to watch play football. Obviously, he had the luxury of playing with Drake May. You know, he was something that I feel like they needed at times. And he came through. Uh, so I took Tez Walker to wrap this thing up. Anybody have anything to say about Tez or any of some other guys that 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 deem worthy of, of being picked? Austin? You know, I'm happy that you were able to fit Tez in here. I was considering him with my previous pick. He's dude, he's gonna be a fun player to watch. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, we'll we'll see where he gets drafted. Um, but this was fun, fellas. Like there were a lot of valuable second round picks in this draft. And, you know, there's again, there's a handful of players that are still on my radar that we still haven't talked about. And, uh, you know, it's going to be fun to watch the senior bowl. It's going to be fun to watch the combine, you know, the pro day. Just, man, we got a lot of good content coming up. 
East West Shrine Bowl too. Don't forget about them. Oh yeah, yeah. that's the ne- next thing on my mind. Yeah, the <laughs> the uh, shout out to Riley. Um, you know, you got um, the other uh, Washington wide receiver, Polk and McMillan. I, I think maybe both of those guys may be coming out. They they've had really good runs. So you know, it's it's kind of we got a really really fun draft coming up, and I'm sure we'll we'll lose some of them. Um, but then some other guys will pop up out of the woodwork through this whole process that uh, really rise up. And, you know, there may be even a quarterback. I don't know. That could that could kind of pop up onto the scene. It seemed like the Duke quarterback was was tr- maybe going to follow da- him down to Texas A&M, potentially. Uh, Riley Leonard, because Duke's... He, he's, he's, signed, he's, he's a committed to Notre Dame. Oh, he went to Notre Dame? Yeah, okay. and Tez Walker did. He did uh, opt out of the bowl game. He yeah. declared six days ago. I so. saw Brian Thomas Jr. said he was going to play in the bowl game, but didn't didn't really necessarily mean anything. Uh, Xavier, like it's a fifth year senior, so he's got to come out. I'm sure some people don't like that breakout age. Well, fifth year senior doesn't mean anything anymore because of the, because of the because of the COVID year. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. True. Um, so, all right, let's get out of here. I very much appreciate. Casey, can you guys. I add one more guy in here, real yeah, quick? Go ahead. Uh, give me give me what you got. Everybody. Uh, Rasheen Ali from Marshall as well, too. Ooh. Someone I've had my eye on for the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, had some early production. I think he was dealing with some family issues um, or a personal issue either this year or last year. Uh, but he will be at, uh, I believe he'll be either at the Senior or Shrine Bowl as well. Um, so looking forward to watching him there as well, too. Yeah, I'll throw uh, Jaquavius Marks in there. He's been a, from Mississippi State. He's been a fun one to watch here. One more running back there for your pleasure. Let's get on out of here. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. All that jazz. We got a 2024 uh, startup mock coming up. We have plenty more rookie mocks coming up. We got all sorts of other content for your pleasure. Austin, be sure to check him out at Austin FF or Austin Abbott FF, two B's and two T's. Matt Foreman at Matt Foreman. You can find me at the FF Dynasty handle. I'm your guy, Casey. This is the FFD and we're out.